Hi guys, welcome back to another video of Edgeworth channel. So today we will be talking about transmissible venereal tumor which is actually a cancerous or tumorous growth in case of dogs. So if you haven't subscribed this channel yet, feel free to subscribe and hit the bell icon for more updates. So canine transmissible venereal tumors are cancerous tumors of the genitalia in dogs. So that is canine and transmissible means it will be transmission happening and venereal tumor that is actually related to the genitalia tumors. So this is actually a transmissible tumor. So synonym is actually infectious sarcoma, venereal granuloma, transmissible lymphosarcoma and sticker tumor. Where you have to focus on sticker tumor. It will be asked for many MCQ examinations. So epidemiology, this is not found in Antarctica and in most of North and Central Europe as well as North America, TVT is uncommonly reported. So TVT is the most common tenant tumor in Bahamas, Japan and India. So the area of the tumor is actually external genitalia, internal genitalia, near the mouth region, nasal region and mammary gland region. So the transmission, the tumor cells are passed from the dog to dog during breeding or unwanted coitus. The tumor may arise deep in the propitial vaginal or nasal cavity. Intact cells of the tumor should be transmitted across the animal during breeding or the coitus. Intact cells means MHC attached cells. So these cells are actually the vector. We can call them as a vector of transmission of CTVT, that is canine TVT. So in the incidence, both male and female dogs can get TVT, and it is more prevalent in case of temperate climate and mainly found in animals with unrestrained sexual activity. So as a part of animal birth control program, we have to completely control the sexual activity of animals. If at all they are uncontrolled, sexual activity exhibitors, they will be having high chance of getting TVT. So in India, 23 to 46 percentage, almost nearly to 50 percentage of the tumors in dogs are TVT. So we have to be very vigilant with the dogs. So pathogenesis was actually described by the Novinsky. The tumor may arise deep within the propitial vaginal or nasal cavity and will be difficult to see during surgery examination. So this may lead to good diagnosis if bleeding is incorrectly assumed to be hematuria or epistaxis for any other causes. So we have to really focus on the tumor growth. So initially TVT grows rapidly and more rapidly the neonatal and immunosuppressed dogs because immunosuppressed dogs will not be having any immunity. So metastasis is uncommon that is nearly 5% and can occur without a primary genital tumor present. So when metastasis occurs, these cells will be completely focusing to the regional lymph nodes, kidney, spleen, eye, brain, pituitary skin and subcutis, mesenteric lymph nodes, peritoneum, maybe the also sites. So clinical signs, in the first phase we will be seeing cauliflower like pedungulated nodular or multilobular papillary appearance and they range in size from that is small nodule that is 5 millimeter to even a large mass of greater than 10 centimeter diameter that is actually firm though a friable will be there. So they form follicular like mass, cauliflower like masses that range in size and they will be increasing their size in the coming days. The surface is often ulcerated and inflamed and that can bleed very easily and the tumors may be single or multiple. So since it is uh, present in the genitalia region, it will be very bad to see the animal and animal will be having a great huge pain. So clinical signs that is soft reddish mass at the vulvovaginal region, blood tinged fetal discharge from vagina. That is actually not due to any hematuria or any problems associated with the reproductive structures and sanguinous discharge with abnormal order. So diagnosis that is tentative diagnosis that is always based on clinical science, history and experience of the clinician and fine needle aspiration cytology and cytological examination. We can go for homogeneous populations of large round cells with distinctive centrally located nucleoli. Impression smear can be taken, tissue biopsy and PCR. So regarding the PCR, we have to be very vigilant with a very important point is that, that is PVT cells, they contain a specific long interspersed nuclear element that is L-I-N-E-S, lines, long interspersed nuclear elements inserted upstream of the MYC gene. So we can go for MYC gene PCR detection assay. So confirmatory diagnosis can be made uh, on the location of the cancerous growth or the tumorous mass the cytology regarding the FNAC and other staining techniques and characteristics of the tumor that will be taking us to the complete or confirmatory diagnosis that is whether the tumor is PVT or not. So lab investigation we can go for EVC, 
and staining techniques that is DIMSA or MAN staining and all. Multiple clear cytoplasmic vacuoles, mitotic figures, chromatin plumping will be seen. Parabasal cells will be there. So these are the parabasal cells and vacuolated cells. Multiple clear cytoplasmic vacuoles. You can see. So you can clearly appreciate those cells. That is the group of nodular cells like thing. These are the TVT cells, parabasal cells, nodular appearance of the cauliflower like tumor mass. So management, uh, if at all it is a very serious condition and we will not be having a good result with the medical management, we can go for complete surgical excision of the tumor. We have to be very vigilant for the surgical excision. Radiation therapy, chemotherapy, immunotherapy, biotherapy and immunomodulators also will be the management ideas. So moving to the medical or chemotherapy, we have to go for injection wind crystal that is for 4 weeks. Continuously every week we have to go for wind crystal injection at the proper dose. Injection pantoprazole because wind crystal will be having mainly 3 side effects and we have to combat these 3 side effects. So injection pantoprazole for containing, uh, controlling the proton pump inhibitors or the proton pump action. Injection tri with M, we have to focus on tri with M and immunobooster syrups and injection or syrup of ondansetrol that is actually 5-HT3 inhibitor though it will be inhibiting the vomiting tendency and immunoboosters will be upgrading the immunity. So the rate of tumor regression is negatively correlated with the tumor size. Okay, we have to be very vigilant with that information. So these are the Vincristin sulfate injections which is available in the market and this is the tri m and pantoprazole ondansetrol injection, ondansetrol solution. Important points that is TVT grows rapidly and more rapidly in neonatal and immunosuppressed dogs. Metastasis is uncommon. So warning. So when Christine has got mainly three side effects that is peripheral neuropathy, gastrointestinal tract problems that is actually vomiting and also they will be having immunosuppressive action. So immunosuppressive action will be combated by the immunomodulators. Gastrointestinal tract problems will be controlled by pantoprazole and ondansetron and the problems associated with peripheral neuropathy will be taken up by the methyl cobalamin content which is present in the tri m So tri m which is containing methyl cobalamin will be very good for neuronal growth and whenever going for intestine administration it should be strict IV because uh, subcutaneous or intravascular injection can lead to tissue necrosis of that area. So we will be moving to the picture gallery. So you can see this is actually in the present in the vaginal region. This is the multi-lobulated big mass. So this is in the penile region, mucial penile region. You can see the mass. So this is actually in the nasal area, nasal cavity, granuloma. So this is actually in the vaginal region. So moving to the at a glance, that is actually you can go for just reading these things because you will be getting all the basic ideas of the TVT at a glance those chemotherapy sessions and those diagnosis sessions and the basic idea and basic pathogenesis you can have a look on this thing thank you